Hello everyone, patch 8.2 is around the corner and quite a lot of you have asked me what happened in Battle for Ezra so far. Could I give you an update, prepare you for what's coming next? So that's what we're going to do today. A quick recap on the story of Battle for Ezra and touch upon some of the things that will be important in patch 8.2. Over 10,000 years ago, Queen Azhar and the Highborn they made contact with Sargeras and the Burning Legion. By using the Well of Eternity, they tried to bring him and the Legion into the world to cleanse it, to make it perfect, like the Queen herself was. Naturally, a resistance was formed, her plans were stopped and the Legion was sent back to where they came from. All this messing about with the Well of Eternity, it had made it incredibly unstable. The entire land sundered apart. The Queen and those who followed her were dragged to the bottom of the sea. Death was imminent, but in the dark depths, a voice called out. The old god Nazoth offered her a deal. Serve me, and I shall save you. Serve me, and I shall make you better than you were. Now, she didn't immediately accept this bargain. She was a queen and not a slave, and would only serve him as such. Nazoth agreed, and the elves, they were transformed into the Naga, working very hard on building up the new capital of Nashatar. Working on the old god's plans, which has come to the surface from time to time. Most prominently, that was during the Cataclysm, there we had Deathwing and his forces, trying to bring about the Hour of Twilight. The moment in which the old gods would break out of the prisons and rule the world once more. But again, those plans were prevented. Now the hour has come, Najatar awaits, and whatever the Jara and Nazavka planned for us, that's coming next. Arise, Ashara. Arise, my queen! <laughs> but Sargeras and the Legion, they didn't just stop after losing the War of the Ancients. They came back several times to try and destroy that heightened spirit inside of Azeroth before it could be corrupted by the old gods. Their greatest invasion, that came during the Expansion Legion, where we saw heroes rise up to form the Order Halls, scour the Broken Isles for ancient titan relics that were known as the Pillars of Creation. There was the Ages of Agrimar with Odin in his Halls of Valor, the Eye of Amonful in the Nightborn city of Suramar, once part of that ancient Night of Empire, the Hammer of Kaskarov within High Mountain, the Tears of Alun in Valshera, and the Tidestone of Golgoneth. This one was actually destroyed by Queen Azara in ages past, but we found the pieces again, to which the Naga, they stole them from us, and they were kind enough to reforge the artifacts. We stole it back and used all the pillars to seal off the gateway at the tomb of Sargeras, seal off the portal from which the Legion was pouring in. Now I really hope that somebody remembered to lock the door at the tomb. It would be a real shame if those relics left behind were now unguarded. But that was only half the battle in Legion, as Illidan and Stormrage knew full well that if we were ever going to truly defeat Sargeras and his Burning Legion, then we'd have to take the battle to them. He opened up a massive rift, and at the end of the expansion, we did the near impossible. We overcame the might of Sargeras and his Burning Legion. Now we did see that the Dark Titan, he got real close to his goal. While being dragged into his prison, his flaming sword, it pierced the planet, severely wounding it. Now we have Azerite, the blood of the Titan spirit bursting all across its surface. Azerite can be used for many different things. Of course, it can change the face of war. So naturally, we have the Horde and the Alliance, they go after it, reigniting the faction war. This will change everything. A campaign was led to fracture the Alliance from within, siege Teldrassil from the Night Elves and hold it so that the Alliance could not retaliate, wound their morale by killing the Night Elf leaders and have the Alliance destroy itself from within. But things, they didn't exactly go as planned. Sourfang, he felt like he had landed a dishonorable blow upon Malfurion and he couldn't take the kill. Neither did Sylvanas, for some reason. So she decided to inflict the wound that the death of a leader was supposed to cause in a different way. Burn it. Burn it! She decided to burn down Teldrassil and all the innocent civilians still trapped inside. Genocide of the Keldorai. That's the way it's been described. This did not sit well with Sourfang, but for the sake of the Horde, he stood with them as the Alliance retaliated. Again, Sylvanas did whatever it took to secure victory. Killing her own troops, using their blight, resurrect the fallen. Sourfang, he couldn't take it any longer and he decided to step away. He wanted to find his honorful death while fighting the Alliance. But King Anduin, he didn't take the kill. Imprisonment, that was to be Saurfang's fate. While Sylvanas and the Horde, they retreated and Lord Ron was blown up. 
So both sides, they could use some more allies to secure the victory. On the alliance, we see that Jaina Proudmoore returns to her homeland of Kal Tiris. They were once part of the alliance before, but the daughter of the sea stepping aside to let Rexar and the Horde kill her father. As well as the alliance not retaliating for this, it had soured the relations quite a bit. Up to the heroes to make things right by helping them with their problems in Drasvar, Stormsong Valley and Tiragard Sounds. At the end of the road, we uncover that Priscilla Ashvane is working against Jaina's mother, so she's exposed for her crimes and thrown into jail, while Jaina and the Alliance, they're accepted back in. She even becomes the Lord Admiral of Kal Tiras. Then, the Hordes, they join Princess Talanji and Prophet Zul within Zandalar, helping the Zandalari with their problems in Zuldazar, Nasmir and Voldun. Her father Rastikan might not see it, but there are dangers from within and without. Prophet Zul isn't loyal, and he works very hard on releasing the artificially created old god known as Gahun out of his prison. His schemes are clever, and his forces are so powerful that King Rastakan sees no other choice but to bind himself and his bloodline to Bonsamdi, the Loa of Death. All who succeed you will keep this bargain to serve me in life and in death forever. We got a deal. With his power added, they are able to save Zuldazar and their capital of the Zara lore, but Kahun, he is set free. Up to the heroes to venture into this heightened complex of Uldir, take care of the corruption spilling out and removing the threat of Kahun. So their capital, it might have been saved from Zu and his forces, but the War of the Alliance, it carries on, and they prepare to siege the Zara lore during their war campaign. Initially, they wanted King Rastakan to surrender, but the king of the Zandalari, he refused. The battle ended with the king dead on the floor and the alliance on the retreats. The pact that was made with Bonsamdi, it has been passed on to his daughter. Now it's she that leads their people in these very dangerous times. Mechatork, leader of the gnomes, is severely wounded in their retreats. He's stuck in his battle suit. While Jaina, the daughter of the sea, she takes the battle to the horde at high sea. She too is wounded, but all of them make it out alive. Now back in Darkshore, Tyrande, Melfurion and the Night Elves, they've not given up on the lands quite yet. The Horde is going to pay for what they've done, so Tyrande decides to invoke the ancient ritual of the Night Warrior. She demands a loon to grant her and their forces the power needed to kick the Horde out of their lands. Their final confrontation, it has one of Sylvanas' Valkyr fall, Valkyr that allow her to return from hell and also resurrect more troops. This, according to a senior game producer over the Blizzard, this is Tyrande getting a revenge for the Night Elves. They don't think that they're going to explore her story much more within Nashatar, despite there being a massive history between Tyrande, Malfurion and Ashara. I am no queen. I am the Kaldora's vengeance. Tyrande was captured and tortured during the War of the Ancients, held within Azara's palace. Melfurion, he played a critical part in the Night Elves' rebellion. It's their former homeland, after all, that is lost beneath the seas. Tyrande has always been worried about becoming similar to Azara, as she took up the role of Lean the Night Elves. Take that as you will, apparently the genocide of the Night Elves it has been avenged by killing a Valkyr, and no real story for these heroes of the Elves will play out within Nashatar. And the battle for Darkshore, that is still going on within a war front, where the sides, they switch roles every time that it's up, switching whoever has control over the land. All in all though, things do seem to be going in the favor of the Alliance, but Sylvanas has a lot more tricks up her sleeve. During the Horde War campaign, they've stumbled across the body of Derek Proudmore. He is Jaina's brother that died while fighting against the first Horde invasion, and the Dark Lady, she has plans with him. Bring him back as an undead, twist his mind, send him back home, and have him deal massive damage from within. Bane Bloodhoof, similar to Saurfang, he can't stand what Sylvanas is doing to the Horde. Saurfang in the meantime, he's been released from his prison by King Endwin in the hopes of stopping Sylvanas together. She knows of this. Her spies are following his moves. If you want to know more about what Saurfang's been doing and who might return in patch 8.2, then definitely make sure to check out that beautiful movie that they've uploaded on their YouTube channel. Bane in the meantime, step by step, he's losing more and more faith in the appointed war chief, and he even asked the spirit of Vol'jin what he was thinking. Turns out that the voices that Vol'jin had been hearing on his deathbed, the spirits that told him to appoint Sylvanas' war chief, they might not have been the Loa at all. Not to mention that he's been touched by Valor. He's been forged into something powerful by a different source than the one that told him to appoint her as the war chief. Bonsamdi, the Lich King, and Eir, none of them can give him the answers that he seeks. So Vol'jin, he goes on hunting the shadows, trying to find out what is going on. Bane in the meantime, 
he's had enough of Sylvanas. Her plans with Derek are going too far in his mind, so he decides to liberate him and return him to Jaina. This does not stay a secret to Sylvanas either, so Bane, he's placed in chains, and his fate is going to be further explored within patch 8.2. Sylvanas will kill you for this, and she may not stop with you. No life is worth living if we cannot be true to our nature. And that's where we are with the story at the moment. The Alliance, they've recruited Kul Tyrans as an ally. The Horde have the Zandalari. The Alliance has murdered the king of the Zandalari and also did some massive damage to their fleets, meaning that they have dominance over the sea. Sylvanas has tried to use Derek, but Bane worked against her, and more voices amongst the Horde are rising up. Some that fully support her choices, while others they are coming to the conclusion that Sylvanas might not be the right war chief. Meanwhile, darkness is stirring beneath the surface. A taste of what the next patch is going to bring that is given within the Crucible Storms raid and the return of Zalatov, Blade of the Black Empire. This blade was one of the artifacts that heroes collected during Legion, powerful weapons to support them in the war. The Scepter of Ajara, for example, that was collected by shamans, while Zalatov, that was for the Shadow Priests. Its origin has been lost to time, but it definitely has some very strong connections to the days of the Black Empire. The time when the old gods ruled the world, and she had quite a lot to say to us during the expansion Legion. So when Sargeras stabbed the world with his sword, we saw Magni Bronzebeard, speaker for the Titan spirits, he rallied all those that he could find to focus on healing the world. The first step was to suck out the corruption that Sargeras' sword contained. Our artifacts were overloaded with power, so much so that they eventually went dormant, including Zalatov. We even got a beautiful necklace called the Heart of Azeroth to assist us with healing the world, gather as much Azerite as we can, not just to use it as a weapon like the faction has been doing, but actually focus on healing our wounds and try to keep the planet together. Fighting over Azeroth is all fine and dandy, but we'll all be in trouble if there's no Azeroth left to fight over. So miraculously, we see that Zalatov shows up again. She is a bit pissed that Shadow Priest abused her like that, but she's also the forgiving sort. The Naga are on the rise, ordered to invade our shores and seize artifacts of power. Zalatov might be our best chance to uncovering what the Naga seek. She guides us to collecting three ancient artifacts, one of the void, one of the storm, and one of the ocean. While we're at it, she also makes sure to pick up a brand new body to walk around with. Now gathering artifacts for her and bringing them back to the precipice of oblivion. Really now, what could go wrong? Hear me, god of the deep. I have brought you the opener. The bringer of truths. The torch that lights the way. Honor our book. Free me to find my own fate. Go. But the blade must remain to serve my will. A fair exchange. Shadows guide you, my dear friend. We will meet again. I am certain of it. I have dreamed your destiny, mortal. The hour is close at hand. We walk right into the hands of the old god Nazoth. Zalatov is set free from the blade, free to find her own fate, but we have a little chat with the old god. The hour is close at hand, death which was sunken shall rise. All that was sleeping shall be awakened. Nazoth is coming, and as a parting gift, we get one of his eyes attached to our head. You do have the choice to actually remove it and get a toy, but what's the fun in that? For a while, it didn't do a whole lot besides letting you see others that also kept the gifts. More recently though, its whispers have definitely become louder. The empty blade that was left behind by Zalatov, that is picked up by horde heroes that have overcome their threats within the crucible storms. Something compels them to bring it back to their war chief. As they present the dagger to Sylvanas, a faint smile curls her lips. For the briefest moment, it seems her eyes darken. A trick of the light, no doubts. 
All will. The Alliance believes that by striking down Rastakhan and decimating the Zandalari fleet, they have broken us. That the Horde will soon crumble. Fools. The Boy King has lied to himself and his people. He hasn't the faintest inkling of what he's truly up against. War is a living thing. It writhes. It grows. Twisting and turning until its final form is revealed. This war is about to shift yet again. And it will be this blade that guides our way to victory. An artifact steeped in old god history that will guide our way into the next patch. Considering that the Horde have busted Priscilla Ashrain out of prison and into a secret meeting with Sylvanas. Considering that Nazoff and Najatar are coming closer, our adventures will take us out into the sea to whatever secrets might wait beneath the surface. Not to mention that we're also going to see Mechagon, but that story is a little bit more on its own. It will unfold in the patch itself. I can't wait to actually have things to do in the game again. I can't wait to see what the story is going to bring. What the point is with Sylvanas as the war chief, with Vault in Spirit, Najatar and Azara and Azov schemes, all of that. Can't wait to see play out. But for now, you're up to speed with the major things that happened in Battle for Azov so far. I know that I skipped quite a lot of details on the things that went down. If you want to know it all, if you want all them juicy details, link to the playlist down below. As always, thank you very much for watching everyone, subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya!